proud of the decisions that have been made in education and particularly in the tertiary sector. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. I call the Honourable Nanaia Mahuta. Tenakwe. Tenakwe, Mr. Speaker. That was the member for Tamaki who was happy to support the loss of teachers and intermediates in his electorate. And he is standing in front of this House promoting education and what the government's done, Mr Speaker. National has framed its fourth budget as a zero budget. But a zero budget is about zero hope, zero aspiration, zero opportunity for the hard-working Kiwis struggling to make a living. And they deserve more from a budget like the one that National dished out. And we know, Mr Speaker, that 13 days is a very very, very long time in politics. <laughs> the Minister of Education stood up in this House during the budget promoting the great gains in education. Just 13 days later, she had to not only retract but reverse and do a whole about face on a policy that fundamentally impacted on children and parents and the delivery of education as people know it and want to preserve it in their communities, Mr Speaker. It's an epic blunder that needed to be fixed and Labour was happy that we raised those questions in the House to assure good thinking New Zealanders that we were, were working with them on this issue. The Minister claimed that they were focusing on quality, not quantity, in the form of the new staff ratios that they wanted to introduce and capping teacher numbers uh, over the next four-year period. Well, it simply didn't stack up. As people worked through the detail, as we presented questions in the House to the Minister that couldn't be answered, more and more red flags went up as bastions of opposition in the schools and in our communities by parents who believed that their children deserved more. Parents were furious at the prospect that losing one or two teachers would fundamentally impact on the learning of their children. Why? Because they translated national government's changes as larger class sizes and less teachers, less opportunity for their children to get a really good chance in the classroom for one-on-one -on -one feedback from their teachers. And they just knew it just, it just didn't make sense. The minister talked a big game, but she was short on detail. And this became more and more evident as we started to understand the real effects of the policy that she was presenting to the House in, in the budget 2012. When she came to this House and introduced the fact that for years seven and eight, technology teachers would be included in the new staff ratios, we were flabbergasted on the side of the House because immediately members on the side of the House were getting calls from intermediates in their schools saying, she's got it wrong. We're not losing just two teachers. We could be losing up to eight teachers. And that is not just about technology teachers. It's about delivering subjects like science, like art, like drama, like all sorts of technology subjects like kapahaka, like gifted learning. And then we had a whole lot of primary schools saying, well, actually for our young learners, it may mean a cut to the extent that we cannot deliver remedial math or recovery reading to our youngest learners, often the ones who need it most. And the minister still stood in this house and defended that policy to members on this side of the house as if it was a great gain in education, and we knew it wasn't. We knew fundamentally children would miss out. Well, hello. It wasn't until recess when members of the government went back into their own communities and were flooded with very angry supporters of their own who said, you've got it wrong, time and time again. So 13 days later, right up into the end, the minister was still defending this. One morning she was saying, we're not going to reverse the policy. The next minute she's saying, well, we'll make a partial ret retraction. And then by day 13, she said, we will reverse this policy. The heat was too hot and she knew they'd got it wrong. But let me ask this. Did the minister, in fact, ask the necessary information of officials to ensure that prior to making this decision, the government had got all the information it needed to assure itself that it wasn't going to fundamentally impact on the delivery of education in their communities? If she did ask for the information, did Cabinet override that advice? We haven't had any answers on that front. Or did she deliberately ignore that information? Time and time again, when we were asking questions of the Minister in this House on that particular issue, she 
she managed to evade some, some detail on some very important questions. But parents deserve an answer. Parents deserve an answer. And that member should be listening to constituents in her own electorate who were equally as angry on this particular issue. And that member was happy to go out and promote a policy that would fundamentally see the loss of teachers in intermediate schools in many of the electorates throughout the country. Labor said that it would reverse this ridiculous policy because it didn't stack up. Putting more children into a class and more pressure on a teacher to teach those children and give quality feedback would only cause more stress and, and National wasn't listening to them. We did. We said that we re would reverse it very early on in the piece. The Minister needs to spell out her plan about how National will invest in quality teaching because this is an important aspiration. It should be done. But now that they've reversed the policy on larger class sizes, will they retract from their investments in improving quality teaching? No answer. Not a word. Not a sigh. Not anything. Not Members on that side of the House with their heads down. But um, um, continuing to invest in quality teaching, we believe, is an important uh, thing to do, but the Minister will need to demonstrate where she will now find savings from. Where she will now find savings from because uh, that particular investment is essential to do. Mr Speaker, the other part of the humiliating reversal that she ha had to do uh, and backtrack on was really supported by the words of young people themselves, because I suspect once the anger of parents moved into the domain of supportive evidence from teachers and then translated through children who started to get upset about the prospect of losing technology to, uh, teachers, this is how they explained it at Kōwhai Intermediate. The, the good thing about technology classes is it's a fun way to learn things that you may need to do when you're older. They also said in primary schools they don't offer technology. They said creativity and practical skills are an important part of education. But here's the point I think national members might want to hear. Students at Kōwhai Intermediate School said getting good grades in other subjects is important. But people who make a difference in the world usually have a unique way of looking at things. You can't be one of these people without creativity, and that's what technology classes deliver. Here is a government, on the one hand, who say they want a brighter future for all New Zealanders, then they cut technology teachers in our intermediate schools to limit the opportunity for our children to be able to take up courses that, in a, that cre teach creative innovation. They got it wrong. We're happy to see the reversal. Mr Speaker, there are so many other areas in which things don't add up. We see funding for private schools since 2009, 14 million extra every year since National has come into government. What is happening there? Mr Speaker, in last year's budget, 21.8 million went into public-private partnership business case modelling. And, and we still haven't got any detail on exactly how much has been spent on the Hobsonville PPP project. In adult and community education, a further $4 million has been cut uh, from universities to be able to offer things like language programs and computer skills. Here is a government who is cut, cut, cutting, limiting the opportunities to people to continue and thrive in education at a whole number of areas. Mr Speaker, finally, I'll respond to the, minister, uh, the member for Tāmaki who uh, talked about uh, student allowances. Well, we do believe on this side of the House that postgraduate study is important. Limiting the access to student allowance to only 200 weeks will affect those who cannot afford to go into postgraduate study. We will see a lot of people unable to take up the opportunity to continue to improve their skills because a decision that this government has made. We do not support it. Mr Speaker, the fourth budget for the National has got it wrong in education. They should be shamed about what they were proposing to do, pulling the wool over parents' eyes. Parents were not stupid. We're glad we supported them on that fundamental issue of giving our children the very best in education. Kia ora. Very good. I call the Honourable Minister.
Minister Judith Collins. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I must say that was an awfully long 